What's up guys, Justin here from thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So in today's video, I want to talk about the best tip that I learned yesterday in Basecamp presentations. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you've watched my videos for very long, you know that I am big on drawing along the axes. And the reason for that is because if you don't draw lines on axis, then you're not going to be able to fill in faces because if you remember the way faces work in SketchUp, you need basically three coplanar edges. So like for example, if I was to draw a triangle like this, this fills in a shape. However, if I was to draw a triangle with this uh, slightly off axis, so let's say this was up like a quarter of an inch or something like that, and then I was to draw a line, that would work, but this would not. So you can see how this goes up just a little bit. And usually what happens is you either bring in a CAD file or you uh, manage to click somewhere that isn't quite on an axis and you can't really fill in a space. So that's what's happened with this series of lines right here. You can't really tell by looking at it, but these are not all on the same plane, which can be very frustrating because then you can't really get this to fill in. And a lot of the time what you end up doing is you start doing this where you're drawing triangles and trying to get things to fill in and they're not really working and it gets really frustrating. So, and the reason for that is because all of these edges are not coplanar. They're up a little bit on the axis. Well, there's a tool out there from TomTom Tom called Vertex Tools. And Vertex Tools is a paid extension. I've done a, I've done a video on this before. I actually didn't need to do more Vertex Tool tutorials because it's actually a really good vertex editing tool. But like, for example, if I was to draw a grid using sandbox tools, I'm going to turn off hidden geometry. This would let me come in here and this would let me select different things. I could set my soft select radius to something like three feet and it lets you move vertexes around or vertices around. So it's a really valuable tool for any kind of like uh, any kind of vertex modeling or anything like that. But another thing that you can do with it is you can actually use it to scale where the vertices are. So that by itself isn't that big of a deal, right? So if you came in here and you edited this, you could use the scale tool to adjust the scale of where the vertices are. So you can see how I'm able to kind of adjust the way that this looks. However, what you can also do is you can set it to a scale of zero. And so this is just a copy of the lines that were over here. If I was to draw across this face, you can see how it won't fill in because those edges aren't on the same plane. However, if I select these lines and I activate vertex tools and I click and drag on the scale button, you can see how in the lower right hand corner, I have a little box that allows me to enter a value for scale. Well, if I type in a scale of zero and hit the enter key, those are suddenly all on the same plane. It basically took the, the vertical um, movement of the vertices and set it so there was zero scale between them. Well, now all of those are on the same plane and I can add a face, which is a huge time saver. Um, instead of having to go in and remodel all these lines and edges, you could bring in like a whole CAD file of stuff. And if you remember, CAD files don't necessarily come in great. You could just use this tool in order to put them all on the same plane by scaling to zero. So one more time. I'm just going to select this, activate vertex tools, click and drag just a little bit on the blue scale button, and then I'm going to type in zero and hit the enter key. When I do that, you can fill in the face. So, and again, that extension does have a cost associated with it, but um, considering the amount of time, I think it's like $20. So considering the amount of time you'd save on this, that alone makes vertex tools worth checking out. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Big thank you to Tyson Karchner. I was sitting in his quad modeling in his quad modeling workshop yesterday when he shared this tip. So I wanted to share it with you guys as well because this is a super cool tip. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.